Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this chapter, we are going to analyze demand. So, we are going to talk about the relationship between demand and price, then the demand curve, after that we are going to see the other determinants of demand, and finally we are going to talk about the movements along and shifts in the demand curve. So, let's get started. In fact, the headlines announce major crop failures in Brazil and East Africa. Coffee prices soar. Shortly afterwards, you found that coffee prices have doubled in the shops. What do you do? You will probably cut back on the amount of coffee you drink. Perhaps you will reduce it from, say, 6 cups per day to 2. Perhaps you will give up drinking coffee altogether. This is simply an illustration of the general relationship between price and consumption. When the price of a good rises, the quantity demanded will fall. This relationship is known as the law of demand. There are two reasons for people will for this law. One is that people will feel poorer. They will not be able to afford to buy so much of the good with their money. The purchasing power of their income has fallen. This is called the income effect. The second reason, the good will now cost more than alternative or substitute goods and people will switch to these. This is called the substitution effect of a price rise. Similarly, when the price of a good falls, the quantity demanded will rise. People can afford to buy more. This is known as the income effect and they will switch away from consuming alternative goods and this is known as the, the substitution effect. Therefore, returning to our example of the increase in the price of coffee, we will not be able to afford to buy as much as before and we will probably drink more tea, fruit juices or even water instead. The income and substitution effects are useful concepts as they help to explain why people react to a price rise by buying less. The size of these effects depends on a range of factors. These factors determine the shape of the demand curve. Here, a word of warning, be careful about the meaning of the words quantity demanded. They refer to the amount that consumers are willing and able to purchase at a given price over a given period, for example, a week or a month or a year. They do not refer to what people would simply like to consume. You might like to own a luxury yacht, but your demand for luxury yachts will almost certainly be zero at the current price. Now, let's talk about the demand curve. Consider the hypothetical data in this table, which shows how many kilograms of potatoes per month would be purchased at various prices. Canons 2 and 3 show the demand schedules for two individuals, Kate and Simon. Canon 4 shows the total market demand schedule. This is the total demand by all consumers. To obtain the market demand schedule for potatoes, we simply add up the quantities demanded at each price by all consumers, that is, Kate, Simon, and everyone else who demands potatoes. Notice that we are talking about demand over a period of time, not at a point in time. Thus, we could talk about daily demand or weekly demand or annual demand. Well, 
The demand schedule can be represented graphically as a demand curve. This figure shows the market demand curve for potatoes corresponding to the schedule in the last table. The price of potatoes is plotted on the vertical axis and the quantity demanded is plotted on the horizontal axis. Point E shows that a price of 100 per kilo, 100,000 tons of potatoes are demanded each month. When the price falls to 18 points, we move down to cur the curve to point D. This shows that the quantity demanded has now risen to 200,000 tons per month. Similarly, if the price falls to 16, we move down the curve again to the point C. Now, 350,000 tons are now demanded. The five points on the graph from A to E correspond to the figures in columns 1 and 4 of the table before. And this graph also enables us to read off the likely quantities demanded at prices other than those in the table. Hence, a demand curve could also be drawn for an individual consumer. Like market demand curves, individuals' demand curves generally slope downwards from left to right. They have negative slope. The lower of the price of the product, the more a person is likely to buy. Two points should be noted at this stage. Demand curves and other curves too are only occasionally used to plot specific data. More frequently, they are used to illustrate general theoretical arguments. In such cases, the axis will simply be price and quantity, with the units unspecified. The term curve is used even when the graph is a straight line. In fact, when using demand curves to illustrate arguments, we frequently draw them as straight lines because it's easier. Now, let's talk about the other determinants of demand. In fact, price is not the only factor that determines how much of a good people will buy. Demand is also affected by the following. One, the number and price of substitute goods, that is to say competitive goods, the higher the price of substitute goods, the higher will be the demand for the good as people switch from the substitutes. For example, the demand for coffee will depend on the price of tea. If tea goes up in price, the demand for coffee will rise. The number and price of complementary goods. Complementary goods are those that are consumed together. For example, cars and petrol, paper and ink uh, cart bridges, fish and chips. The higher the price of complementary goods, the fewer of them will be bought and hence the less will be the demand for the good under consideration. For example, the demand for batteries will depend on the price of handheld games. If the price of handheld games comes down so that more are bought, the demand for batteries will rise. Taste. The more desirable people find the good, the more they will demand. Tastes are affected by advertising, by fashion, by observing other consumers, by considerations of health and by the experiences from consuming the good on previous occasions. Income. As people's income rise, their demand for most goods will rise. Such goods are called normal goods. There are exceptions to this general rule, however. As people get richer, they spend less on inferior goods. 
such as supermarket value ranges and switch to better quality goods. The distribution of income. Indeed, if national income were redistributed from the poor to the rich, the demand for luxury goods would rise. At the same time, as the poor got poorer, they might have to buy more inferior goods, whose demand would thus rise too. Eventually, expectations of future price changes. If people think that prices are going to rise in the future, they are likely to buy more now before the price does go up. Very good. Now, let's talk about the movements along and shifts in the demand curve. In fact, a demand curve is constructed on the assumption that ceteris paribus or other things remain equal. In other words, it is assumed that none of the determinants of demand other than price changes. The effect of a change in price is then simply illustrated by a movement along the demand curve. For example, from point B to point D in the last figure, when the prices of potatoes rises from 40 to, to, when, to 80 per kilo. So what happens then when one of these other determinants does change? The answer is that we have to construct a whole new demand curve, called the curve shifts, in a change in one of the other determinants causes demand to rise, say income rises, well, the whole curve will shift to the right. This shows that at each price, more will be demanded than before. Thus, in this figure, at a price of P, a quantity of Q was originally demanded. But now, after the increase in demand, the quantity is demanded. If a change in a determinant other than price causes demand to fall, the whole curve will shift to the left. To distinguish between shifts in and movements along demand curves, it is usual to distinguish between a change in demand and a change in the quantity demanded. A shift in the demand curve is referred to as a change in demand, whereas a movement along the demand curve as a result of a change in price is referred to, uh, to as a change in the quantity demanded. In this chapter, we saw that when the price of a good rises, the quantity demanded per peri period of time will fall. This is known as the law of demand. It applies both to individuals' demand and to the whole market demand. 2. The law of demand is explained by the income and substitution effects of a price change. 3. The relationship between price and quantity demanded per period of time can be shown in a table or a schedule or as a graph. On the graph, price is plotted on the vertical axis and quantity demanded per period of time on the horizontal axis. The resulting demand curve is downward sloping, negatively sloped. 4. Other determinants of demand include dates, the number and price of substitute goods, the number and price of complementary goods, income, distribution of income, and expectations of future price changes. If price changes, the effect is known by is shown by a movement along the demand curve. We call this effect a change in the quantity demanded. If any other determinant of demand changes, the whole curve will shift. We call this effect on change demand. A rightward shift represents an increase in demand 
and a leftward shift represents a decrease in the demand. Well, this is the end of the present chapter. In the next chapter, we are going to talk about supply. Thank you very much for your attention.